They say childhood memories are priceless, but for Jackie Cooper, the rush to stardom meant missing out on the carefree joys of a normal childhood. Can we make up for lost time? Imagine a time when the silver screen sparkled with the radiance of natural talent, where child stars were the beacon of awe-inspiring brilliance. In the glorious world of dreams, there emerged a young star who effortlessly stole the limelight, captivating audiences with an irresistible charm and an unparalleled flair. We are talking about the one and only America's boy, Jackie Cooper. He soared above the rest, leaving an unforgettable mark on the world of entertainment. With his tousled blonde hair, pouty lower lip, and the ability to shed tears on command, Jackie Cooper captured the hearts of millions. But behind the dazzling lights and adoring fans, there was a darker side to his early stardom. In this video, we will learn the untold story of Jackie Cooper, a tale of childhood trauma, lost innocence, and the price of fame. So, keep watching. From TV stardom to becoming the top executive in the 60s, and even winning an Emmy as a director in the 70s, Jackie Cooper's talent knew no bounds. But there was always more, so much more, to him than you ever knew. If Cooper was bitter about Hollywood in his later years, there's a reason. Hidden beneath the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's golden age, there was a whirlwind of ups and downs, filled with challenges and triumphs that shaped him into the legend he became. Can you imagine a little kid, just two years old, left all alone when his father disappeared? Sounds like he was unfortunate, right? But life had other plans in store for our hero. With a financially struggling mother, young Jackie found himself in the holds of his tough grandmother. Times were tough, though. Jackie's family struggled to make ends meet, so his grandmother had an idea. She took him to the movie studios, hoping to find work as an extra and make a little extra cash. Can you imagine the scene? A pint-sized Jackie, his cheeks rosy and determination glimmering in his eyes, pressed against those iron gates. And besides him, his formidable grandmother, fierce as a lioness, pinching and playfully slapping him as they ventured forth into the unknown. Together, they ventured into the magical realm of celluloid dreams, where a mere two dollars a day and a humble box lunch were their golden treasures. Little did they know, this was only the beginning. When he was just seven years old, he scored his big break in the Hal Roach Studios' Our Gang Comedies, and he earned a cool 50 bucks every week. But wait, because Cooper's true star power shone through in Skippy, the three epic crying scenes left audiences spellbound and utterly captivated. This outstanding performance even landed him an Academy Award nomination. Suddenly, Cooper became the talk of the town, hailed as one of the greatest child actors of his generation. Let's not forget, though, that behind the Hollywood glitz and glamour, he was just a little kid. In fact, he fell asleep during the ceremony itself, in the lap of none other than Oscar winner Mary Dressler. Turns out, he was more interested in skipping school that day than basking in the spotlight. Ah, the priorities of innocent kids. Fast forward a year, and Cooper's talent hit another knockout blow in the boxing flick, The Champ. Directed by the amazing King Vider, this tearjerker of a movie solidified Cooper's status as a true powerhouse performer. You won't believe this odd couple on the screen. Cooper and his co-star, Wallace Beery. Together, they made the most unexpected but incredible team. You know, Cooper himself wasn't all that impressed with his early roles. He'd often skim through the scripts, pretending to be nonchalant. But hey, who could blame him? He was a quick learner with no formal training, yet he managed to fool everyone with his natural talent. It's funny though, later when he looked back on those days, he admitted he wasn't fully invested and didn't think he was all that great. But wait, there's more. Cooper and Barry didn't stop at the champ either. They had an encore performance in three additional films, one of which was the thrilling Treasure Island. Can you believe they even kept Cooper in short pants for as long as they could? Yep, they even had to shave his leg hairs because it started to show up on camera. That's what we call dedication to the craft. As America's boy, Cooper was adored by all. Cooper enjoyed the full star treatment during his heyday at MGM. 
He even left his mark on Hollywood by imprinting his foot and handprints in the legendary forecourt of Grauman's Chinese Theater. His every move was meticulously documented in newspapers and magazines, and he even had his own fan club, a dedicated newspaper bearing his name, and someone to diligently respond to his fan mail. He rubbed shoulders with notable figures like President Franklin D. Roosevelt and aviation pioneer Charles Lindbergh. Clara Bow, the iconic silent film star, visited his home in Beverly Hills, and even George Gershwin himself once graced the family with a performance on their grand piano. But behind the dazzling facade of stardom, the pressures weighed heavily on Cooper's young shoulders. He was deprived of simple childhood joys, like roller skating or riding a bicycle alone, all because he was considered a precious asset to the studio. His on-set tutors provided a lackluster education while he faced the same heavy responsibilities as his adult co-stars. The glitz and glamour concealed a deep longing for a normal childhood, a longing that Cooper candidly revealed in his autobiography, Please Don't Shoot My Dog. The title of the book stemmed from a traumatizing incident on the set of Skippy, directed by Cooper's own uncle, Norman Torig. In a bid to extract tears for a scene, Cooper's own family deceived him. His grandmother and Torg staged a heart-wrenching scenario where Cooper's beloved pet dog was seemingly dragged off the set and shot by a security guard. They achieved their desired scene, but Cooper was left overwhelmed with grief, inconsolable to the point that a doctor had to administer a sedative later that day. As he sobbed uncontrollably, Cooper visualized the dog covered in blood from that single, devastating shot. Only after performing the scene to the best of his abilities did he discover that his dog was unharmed. The sight of Torog, the guard, and his own grandmother grinning over the successful deception pierced his heart. The painful moment highlighted the emotional toll of manipulating a child's innocence in the name of art, a theme sadly prevalent behind the scenes of Hollywood's golden era. Cooper wrote about how people later tried to rationalize his experiences, emphasizing the money he made, the exciting opportunities he had, the influential people he met, and the valuable career training he received. Yet, no amount of justification or excuses could compensate for what he lost, a normal childhood abandoned for an early career in movies. Unsurprisingly, as Cooper grew into a man who forged his own path, he sought to set the record straight whenever and however he saw fit. Following his breakthrough role in Skippy in 1931, Cooper signed a contract with MGM, keeping him busy with over a dozen films in the subsequent five years. At the tender age of 13, he even dated the teenage sensation Judy Garland. And, in a revelation that came decades later, Cooper confessed to a secret whirlwind romance with the older and captivating MGM colleague Joan Crawford when he was just 17. However, as Cooper navigated through adolescence, his career experienced a downturn. Deemed too unremarkable by studio executives, his contract with MGM ended when he was a mere 14 years old, marking the end of his glorious days as a child star. However, he didn't let setbacks define his path. Over the next six years, he tirelessly worked with various studios, appearing in nearly two dozen films that showcased his versatility. He shared the screen with the radiant Deanna Durbin in That Certain Age, portrayed the iconic character Henry Aldrich in What a Life and Life with Henry, and joined forces with the legendary Henry Fonda in The Return of Frank James. As he transitioned into adolescence, Cooper confronted the challenges of coming of age in front of the camera in the film 17. World War II was raging, and Cooper's career was on a downward spiral. But guess what? He joined the Navy and rose through the ranks to become a captain. Now, after the war, Cooper faced a major challenge. Transitioning from a child star to an adult performer was no piece of cake. He found himself landing roles in B-movies, like Kilroy was here. But he was scared. In a 1956 interview, he admitted, I was a man in long pants, still being identified as the one-time child star. People expected me to perform, and I just couldn't. But you know what Jackie did? He packed his bags and headed to start fresh in the theater. What an entrance!
Just a year later, he made his Broadway debut in the gripping drama Magnolia Alley. Although the play didn't run for long, it earned him rave reviews and established him as a force to be reckoned with on the stage. The same year, he grabbed the role of Ensign Pover in the rogue company of the hit Broadway play Mr. Roberts, even reprising the role in London. Cooper made his way back to Broadway in 1951, joining forces with the talented Janice Page in Remains to be Seen. And that's not all. Over the next few years, he showcased his acting chops on live TV dramatic anthologies like Craft Theater, U.S. Steel Hour, and Philco Television Playhouse. The guy was everywhere. In 1955, he returned to Hollywood, ready to shine in the sitcom The People's Choice. He played the lovable Socrates Sock Miller, a government naturalist and city councilman smitten with the mayor's daughter. But here's the twist. Cooper found his true calling in television. Despite the ups and downs of his career, he flourished as both an actor and a director in the TV industry. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Jackie Cooper's personal experiences as a child star shaped his advocacy for protecting young talents in the entertainment industry. He was all about letting kids be kids and not robbing them of their childhood. In fact, when he directed movies, he preferred casting kids who had never acted before because, in his words, they were more real. But he admitted he wasn't the best at directing children. He couldn't bring himself to deceive or push them too hard. A true softy at heart, that Cooper. While his career was skyrocketing, his personal life had its ups and downs. Cooper had been married and divorced twice, first to June Horn and then to New York actress Hildy Parks. But everything changed when he met Barbara Krauss. They tied the knot, and their marriage became his rock, guiding him away from the pitfalls of booze and drugs. Jackie couldn't help but gush about his love for Barbara, saying, She looks after me, without giving away too many details. Indeed, a true love story. But here's something you might not know about Jackie Cooper. He had a deep affection for horses. They became his solace, representing his empathy and refusal to discard living beings when they were no longer useful. The Coopers owned four horses, but only one was racing because the others were injured. Most people would have gotten rid of those injured horses, but not Jackie Cooper. He couldn't bear the thought of discarding them, just like he felt he'd been discarded in his early career. To him, they were more than just animals. They were individuals deserving of care and compassion. He passionately expressed, You use them up and use them up, and they get a little lame, and you have people who want to get rid of them. That's why I would never have a large stable of horses. I care too much individually about the animals. Cooper's true love for horses was deeply intertwined with his hatred for the way actors were treated in the industry. To him, actors were often seen as disposable commodities, used until they were no longer of use and then tossed aside. He had experienced this firsthand and couldn't stand the thought of subjecting any living being to the same fate. Horses became a symbol of his empathy and his refusal to treat anything or anyone as expendable. While Cooper's career had its share of challenges and setbacks, he remained determined to make his mark. He knew he had to keep acting because that's what he knew best. In his own words, I just have to keep going. I didn't know how to do anything else. He took matters into his own hands, investing his own money in plays he believed in, even if they were destined to fail. Why? Because he knew that reviews would open doors for him and pave the way for future roles. As the years went by, Jackie Cooper's star continued to shine. In 1989, after an incredible 64-year career, he decided to step away from the limelight. No grand tributes or retrospectives for him. In May 2011, he died at a skilled nursing facility in Santa Monica after a brief illness. But his legacy lives on. A talented child star, a seasoned actor, and an Emmy Award-winning director. Jackie Cooper was a true Hollywood legend who conquered challenges, fought for what he believed in, and left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. His story serves as a powerful reminder of the hidden struggles that can accompany early fame and the importance of protecting the innocence and well-being of the children in the entertainment industry. It makes us pause and reflect on our own lives. Jackie was a true trailblazer, but hey, 
Hold on to your seats because we have another mind-blowing story coming your way. In our next video, we unravel the astonishing revelation that turned Bobby Darren's world upside down.